Hello my soccer universe, I think I hinted at it in the last video, but we already know no matter what happens, there will be a new Women's World Cup winner. That is always exciting, I gotta say. Now, will it be Spain, will it be Sweden, will it be Australia or will it be England? That remains up in, in the air and we'll discuss this a little bit later on. But I really wanna also uh, go back and talk a little bit about the quarterfinals. Because we had at least two classics in there, with Japan against Sweden being a really, really exciting game. And then, despite the not being goals, I think Australia-France matched that one and finished with a penalty shooter that arguably was more dramatic than the one between Sweden and the USA, although it did not have the big cap that we had uh, for that particular shootout. When it comes to most convincing performances, it's really, really hard to tell. I mean, each of the teams uh, that are left have their own strengths. I think Spain probably had the easiest way in because they were so dominant, especially in the first half. But again, Spanish domination never kind of translates into goals. So the Netherlands actually had a, had, had a good chance of winning. Sweden, uh, I think, is the most physical team. And they are just uh, also so much taller than most of the others. Although now the competition will get stiffer for them. But they can outmuscle a lot. And then they have a uh, really good talent up front. And with Amanda Illestad and Defender who is already on four goals. Look that up if that ever happened on the men's side. Australia, I think, shows quite some resilience. They had definitely the hardest battle against an uh, absolute amazing France team. I think both of these would have been deser uh, deserved finalists, or at least semi-finalists, I have had. So there was very little to separate these two. I think France probably had a little bit more finesse. And Australia had a little bit more fight in there. But, you know, Sam Kerr hasn't even arrived at the tournament. And I have to say, this England team reminds me a little bit of France 2018. Nothing fancy. Nothing fancy, just solid. Just solid and resourceful. And yes, they come back against Colombia. Uh, being, uh, being a goal down and uh, needing assistance from the Colombian goalkeeper. On the other side, they get the job done again. And that also doesn't look so bad. So yeah, I gave you already a little bit, little, bit, little bit of an outline. As I said, I have made short videos. Uh, Spain, Netherlands, it was mostly Spain that was dominating. They got a deserved uh, go-ahead goal in the 81st minute through a penalty that Van de Gracht uh, <laughs> cost. But especially in the first half, they had a goal already disallowed. Uh, but they probably should have done a little bit more with all the dominance that they had. At that point, when the goal for Spain fell, it was actually Netherlands had a little bit more of the game. They got the equalizer through Van de Gracht, who kind of makes up for her mistakes. There's a nice redemption uh, story. And then Berenstein probably should have won it for, for them. But in the end, uh, Paraguelo in the 111th minute scores the winning goal with a nice individual effort like the one from Berenstein. And that's a 19-year-old girl playing for Barcelona. Future star. Watch out for that. I was... Unfortunately, I could not see much of that game because that was the game that the US should have played and I don't know why they have to then keep that spot when there are two European teams playing. This, to me, reeks of incompetence on the side of the scheduling. Or pandering too much to the United States and not being rewarded for that, however you want to say it. I really enjoyed Japan against, against Sweden, although I was... Honestly, this is disappointed for of Japan because we all talked Japan up Big, big. They were the most convincing team up until that point. The only thing is, I saw them already having some trouble against Norway. With a taller opponent. And Sweden's played right into that. They attacked them a high. They used uh, their expertise on dead policy situations. And then it was only 1-0. It was only down to some great saves. And maybe a few misses from the Swedes who also hit the post. Uh, the first goal, though, was dirty as it can be, but it's Amanda Illestad who scores her fourth goal, again from a uh, short distance. I'm not sure if she ever had such a score like it. I wouldn't know. Then uh, they get a penalty. It was a hands penalty. Yes, clear penalty. I hate these penalties because the a Japanese girl didn't really know what she's doing. Um, and it's 2-0 and you thought that the game is done. 
And I think Sweden also, and then they took it a few steps back, and then Japan came up, had actually a few chances, then they get a penalty, that is put against the crossbar, uh, they a few, then they score a goal in the 87th, when it was really, Sweden were begging to, to uh, get this goal, and they just couldn't get the equalizer. I actually th uh, think if Japan would have scored the equalizer there, they probably might have won that game because Sweden so much tried to negotiate the game and get out with just that win that I'm not sure they could have turned on the game. It was rather enthralling at the end. It was a really, really exciting game. Although I have had to say for at least 60 minutes, Sweden was clearly, clearly the better team. Australia against France was a game that ebbed and flowed back and forth. At the beginning it was France, uh, the Ani was taken down, they should have been at least a yellow if not more. Um, then Australia came back, should have take, take the lead, what a save there, I mean then the French goalkeeper almost imploding uh, on the scene there. Um, Australia then again after that, really pressuring, you thought that it's only a matter of time until they score the go-ahead goal. Only for France to settle it again and get back into it. Sec in the over overtime, both teams went for it. It was real fun to watch. Unfortunately, I couldn't see overtime because I had other commitments, but I could see the penalty shootout. But from what I read, over over overtime was also quite entertaining. This was a game that if I wouldn't have been so busy with other, other stuff, I think I would have just stared at that TV because it's really going back and forth. It was hard for me to claw myself back and focus on the important things in life in a way which, yes, uh, soccer is not the most important thing in, in life, although for me it often almost seems this way, but you know, you always have to remember that there are more important things in life. It goes to penalties. And what a penalty shootout that was. I mean, for France misses the first penalty through Bashar, then the next two are converted, and then Kately sees uh, the penalty duly uh, saved. Everyone then converts until the last penalty. Perissé is saved by Arnold, who then herself steps up to s convert. Goalie goes in the wrong one, but she misses. And at that point, I thought all the momentum is not going for France. And it seemed like, because now the, uh, the French are take us all relatively safe, whereas with the Australian ones, you always were kind of so-and-so. Until Dali sees her saved. Hi, bye. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. Goalie off the line. Do it again, same corner, same height, saved again. However, Hunt also sees her against the, um, um, I think against the, mood, the Woodwork or saved. Uh, I don't remember, but then there's another miss for Frost and then uh, Wine converts the winning penalty. I mean, if there's so many misses, it's gonna happen. But it is always good uh, to look at body language there and for the women it's, a, it's still a little bit more there than meanwhile for, for the men who all mostly seem stone-faced. For, 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 for the women you get a little bit more still. Amazing penalty shooter. It was really at a, at a, at a point where I thought, ooh, 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 France I really have the upper hand. But the more Australia got back into sudden death, the more it was swinging back to, to Australia. It's really, really, I love penalty shooters. And then, as I said, England, uh, nothing great. It was a useful performance by England. I think this is the best way to put it. Colombia gave, gave it all. They take the lead in the 44th minute, but deep in the stoppage time, uh, Colombian goalkeeper spills it and Lauren Hemp from close distance, pulls it into the empty net. And then Russo scores the winning goal and all the attempts by Colombia don't amount for much. England is still. And so we have the following semi-finals to be played Tuesday and Wednesday, um, Spain against Sweden, gonna be a tight one, gonna be a tight, 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 tight one. I, I cannot call either of these two. I know that probably Spain should be considered slight favorites, but I have been underestimating Sweden all along. And Sweden had the toughest route into the semifinal, arguably. And if you take group stage results, I think Spain are the easiest opponent. So, yeah, and Sweden is a team that is uh, women's football royalty, but they have not won yet a gold medal. So, in that sense, hmm, we gotta see. Australia against England, though, uh, yes, I think England should be considered favorites there. However, there's the crowd factor, and that will probably level the playing field. And the uh, fitter Sam Kerr gets, the more interesting it will be. I think this one is definitely the big one that has probably the masses. Uh, grip there and it's great to have us I mean as much as I felt for the French I really did 
but it's great to have a semi fileless and also this is for the first time that since 2003 that the host nation makes it to the semi final so also have that in mind i give you the final bracket this is what the models is against pre-tournament ratings although in the quarterfinals they all worked out uh, correctly, it's always uh, the favorites uh, according to pre-tournament ratings, including home field advantage. Moved on, we have uh, Spain, a uh, slight favorites over Sweden, England, um, a little bit more, but just by a smidgen more over Australia, which would mean a uh, Spain-England final. However, I can see it going the other way around as well. Last one. All the teams playing in kind of blue jerseys lost in the quarter quarterfinals. And now the question is, how will the matchups be? I think all teams could play in first team jerseys, but I'm not 100% sure that they will. Any case, who do you think will win the Women's World Cup? I will give you a video after the semifinals again. For the final, I'm already on vacation. I might give you a final video um, from vacation, <laughs> but there will be no backdrop, but I will probably take the jerseys of the two finalists with me just in case. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel and see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!